record this. Yeah. I just wanted to ask your permission. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. It's okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I won't interrupt anymore. Okay. So like, yeah, and bikes that we have been receiving from Walking Bikes Chicago and of the recent continent that we receive from Walking Bikes has played a lot of impact in people's lives, has contributed towards the present country and world situation, more especially of the recent container. So like of the recent container, most of those bikes um, already gone to community health workers, you know, farmers and people that are moving six, seven miles every day. And some are local traders because when the pandemic came, there was a partial lockdown in the community. And due to the experience, because remember in 2014, CLU had an Ebola. When Ebola came, you know, we, it's like we are new to this disease. People are learning and we don't know how to cure it. We don't know how to take the precautionary measures. So with that, we lost many lives. So for this, like, I learned that bicycle can contribute to this pandemic. You know, we are in by telling the people, you know, you can easily save if you travel around with your bike. And indeed it happens. So lots of people like just grabbing bike and come to the shop, applying for our programs, applying for a general program. And from there, like they travel around. Of course, the partial lockdown was so tough because the source of income of people is very low, always here. There is no job employment. But like we use that kind of relative things when people use their bikes, go around some local traders they can use their bikes and go around communities and sell food stuff or buy food stuff before they can survive with their families so with that it has contributed great to this pandemic and most of most of most of the health workers like i can send you picture of course your bike is now to a public health worker um um um, Trevor, your bike, your your bike is now to public health workers. He is using that bike to deliver supplies and reach more people in in the in our rural communities to tell them how to put all the precautions measures for COVID nineteen. So tremendously, the bikes are contributing greatly and changing lives for people here. That's great to hear. Yeah. Yeah. So like from there, like um, schools, like students, we have like exam class students. And of course, it is always useful for them. And with that, like they travel, they don't travel on, on general commercial motorbike because here we use our local transport, like commercial motorbike. So like the students, community health workers, most of them around the rural community uses their bike presently this time of COVID-19 to travel around and to go around schools and take their public exams. So with that, it is contributing tremendously towards saving lives and it is contributing tremendously towards improving lives and, and create an impact to our present country situation because with the bikes, with the bikes, people know they can travel around, move around without no police stop, without no medical check, because this is what's happening. When you walk or use your car, they can stop you for a check. But with your bicycle, you know, riding that kind of distance, like 10 or 15 kilometer, you can go without no check because like always they know people that are giving out supplies, people that are healthy, they know you're like doing business with your bike or like cyclists, I just wanna get physical fitness, something like that. But it is clear that you don't have a stop in all the police stop 
you don't have a stop they just let it go because you are on a bike because they want more people to go on a bike so with bikes that we get from you guys this has helped salvage the situation for us in Sierra Leone yeah can you hear me yeah yeah no this is this is great to hear stylish um i think we all probably have a lot of questions for you um so how do you connect with the people who need bikes do they just know you're out there and they reach out to you or do you reach out to health facilities is that who you're primarily working with or specific schools how do you get bikes to folks who need them a very a very good question so um well first of all i don't have to reach out people or i don't have to reach out community health center or i don't have to reach out schools because what i have is small and those who need it have plenty so the best thing that i always do my programs are very popular in the country so people know about it because of course we are registered NGO so they always apply apply directly to me as a, a general manager of the program so we are like we choose the best places to go you know the best application the best applicant can compare which one is needed most rather than just um attending to all the application because what we have is small and those who need it are plenty so the best thing that we always do we find the most needy applicants or most needy places to send bikes so it's from there like we choose where and where to send bikes of course people know about it because we have been doing this since 2009 and from that time to now like each and every corner like any beneficiary will say i got this bike from stylish I got this back from Village Bicycle Project. Then he or she can explain, how does this happen? This is an organization. This man is running this bike program. So like um, from there, we attended the training. And from there, briefly, we get the bicycle. And now we are using it for our home use to go to school, to, to attend classes, to go to the hospital to go to the market. So it's from there they get and learn about our programs. Got it. And do you sell bikes too, Stylish? Of course, yes. Um, like I have the biggest bicycle shop in the country, in Sierra Leone. Of course, we always we are in all the guys i'm a two hours away drive from the city then like even like i am i am in the rural community people from the city and including cyclists like strong road cyclists will come down to buy bikes and parts and for repairs i'm a dynamic bicycle mechanic as well so i always do repair for them repair their bikes and always make sure they are able to be on the road like <laughs> from there like i get more popularity from them so with the bikes that we sell in the shop like we always like always try to sell them like for small price of course that is why i am i am in the in the in the in the rural community of course so that we cannot sell the bikes for big price so that it can be affordable for local folks and for whosoever want to access them to to go everywhere yes frank i think frank want to ask a question so i have a question that i'm very interested in stylish what is yes. the the like if someone gets a bike and then gets into the courier business which i know is very popular what's the difference between not having a bike and having a bike in sort of like the the income and economic effects that that can have on a person. Okay, so of course I want to start with the. Thank you for your question. The economic situation in Sierra Leone is very hard. Hard in a sense 
there are, uh, there are uh, no better jobs or the rate of employment is very, very low. So you having your bike, you have a lot of, a lot of respect for that. One bike can change many families' lives here in Sierra Leone. So you having one bike in your family or amongst your friends makes you to have a lot of respect. You know, because like thinking of someone that is not making one dollar a day to have a bike, you know, is very respectful. So that one bike, more than 10 people can use it in your family or even your friend at school. Even though we say the bicycle has one seat, still like here, friends we carry two or three of their friends on top of one bike to go to school or to go to the market. So that is the economic situation here of bicycle. So it is always respectful a bike and because people don't make that kind of money you know and are many people able to afford bikes we've heard of other other partners for example in in malawi who are able to access finance so they can get a loan to purchase a bike and then pay it off over time, uh, in part with the money that they save by not having to pay for other transport. Do yeah. people have trouble accessing the bikes that you have for sale or how do you uh, work around that? No, with, with, with me, with my, with my work, or generally with Village Bicycle Projects, we enable people to able to afford bikes for a very small price. And all of our program bikes goes like for $12 so that it can able to reach the most needy people. So with that, um, we've, as I mentioned earlier, we'll find the most needy people that want bikes. We know they want bikes, but they don't have the money and we give them time for them to save that money. For example, if you apply for our program, I will send you our program details and how our program will run to see this is what we want and this is our criteria and we are looking for the most needy people, you know, that want the bike. We know they, if, even if they don't have money, but we know they have the need and as time goes on, they can able to afford the bike for a very, very small price, like $12 compared to if I take the bike to the city can cost um, $50, $60, which is a lot here. So with that, like, people are able to afford the bike. They can able, yeah. With no loan, they can afford that rather than loaning it and, like, what the guys in Malawi do. Sometimes we do that in giving preference. If you see, like, the source of source of income of the person is really, really bad, but you want him to get a commitment fees, for that particular bike, you will tell him or her, I can give you time, but I can keep the bike. When you get the money, we give you your bike. And from there, he or she can work so hard to get the bike. But we normally give that preference to girls because we always want women or girls on the bike. So stylish. Yes. Um, how many how many people work at uh, your organization at Village Bicycle Project in Sierra Leone? And okay. sec two parts. Second part is how many yeah. hours do you spend on each bicycle? Average. Average. Okay. And uh, thank you. So I have I have um, ten people working with me in here in my operations, then I have in generally in my shop, I have like 15 like apprentice boys and girls that I am training. So with that like, you can imagine how many minutes we spend on one bike. 
So I <laughs> so we just spend one bike we can take 30 minutes to fix it, even to service it overall. We can do that 30 minutes because I have a very dynamic team, well trained, and I always monitor them. We work so fast to make sure <laughs> in, to make sure in one hour we can fix 20, 30, 40 bicycles. Yeah, but we are fast on that. Wow. <laughs> well, it takes us four hours. <laughs> I know, I know. So like we 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 are already because like of course like all the boys that I'm telling you, my apprentice and including my team, it is the only job we are sitting for. We have nothing else to do. We work on bikes and some even wanna come as volunteers. Sometimes if I have lunch, they can work. If I have to provide them lunch, if I have to provide them lunch. They can work so it is always easy and guys are ready to work because there is an empowerment system already and the boys and girls that are trained of course they are very passionate and enthusiastic about it you know they are always happy when they work on bikes and they get something they learn like skills and things like that and from there like some of the boys and girls we are able to open bike shop for them mechanical bike shop for them so they also we fix bikes for other community that is how it's working yes. so we are always fast on fixing bike rather than spending four hours on one bike <laughs> yes thank you Stylish. My name is Dave. I'm on the board. I'm a volunteer. I just want to say how um, great it is to hear from you. And it's very motivating for us here in Chicago to hear about the great work that you're doing there. And uh, we work hard to collect bikes and fix bikes and ship bikes. And um, it, like I said, it's, it's just great to hear all the work that you're able to do with people who need bikes in Sierra Leone. And the COVID has made the world smaller. And uh, we're here in Chicago doing what we can for you. So just thank you uh, for everything that you do. Thank you, guys. I'm very, very privileged to work with you. And I think um, it is a great, great, great pleasure to always work with you and to make sure we sustain the partnership. And from there, we derive and achieve a better goals of changing lives with bicycles here. But as I'm talking to you, it is really a big thing of working with working bikes and it's a big thing of working bikes, sending bikes in this part of the world that is creating a lot of impact. So thank you to all volunteers. You guys are doing a short, great work. I don't know what I can say even to mention that, but you are doing a really, really great job. I wish one of you guys can able to make a trip down here. You can see how bicycle is con con contributing to, in to the human development and contributing to human capital here. Because you can see students who trek six, seven miles every day, right to school. From there, we see like grades and attendance rapidly improving, which is very, very important because like, if the kids walk that kind of long distance, their academic performance is very bad. Their attendance is always low. They late to come to school, but with the bikes, like we give them, we monitor, we see all their grades, academic performance on mathematics, English and science rapidly improve because of the bikes. And our success stories are always great from parents, how bicycle is helping their kids to contribute to their human capital. So once more, I want to say thank you to the team of volunteers in Chicago. And we are always privileged to work with you guys. And your work is supporting us here. Great. Yeah. That's great. Thank you so much, Stylish. We really appreciate it. And we hope we can send another container to you um, before too much time has passed. Uh, any priorities, any bikes you really like to see coming out of the container from working bikes, things that excite you, something that we should make sure to include 
in our next container, whether it's of a course, yes. or yeah, type of budget. Okay, yeah. So uh, thank you. It's a question, something I want to talk about. And thank God you have asked me the question. So like, um, um, what, uh, what I, as I mentioned to you, like few this back, and like we always want certain um, types of bikes, certain quality of bike. Of course, I can still talk about the road bikes and I have the biggest cycling team in Sierra Leone. Lone Star Cycling Team. If you guys want to check on that, you can always follow our Facebook page and we are doing great. And it's all started by me. So, and my young boys and young girls want to be into road cycling. So I've been working on that for the past many years. I started fixing hybrid bikes, fixing them to road bikes. And from there, now I, I am able to collect bikes from um other partners including walking bikes to make sure the boys and girls come on the road of course the the shorts the jerseys and and the cycling shoes helmets are very great they keep us fit and they keep us very very happy to cycle on the road so that is the first thing i would love to mention about if we can get good road bikes even with 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 no high numbers with certain quantity that can help the team. But primarily for mountain bike, mountain bike is always our priority. So when you get 26 mountain bike, 27 mountain bike, like 29 mountain bikes, I think that could be very great. Like I the container we just received, we only have a few, of course, no 27 mountain bike. Of course, there, there was one 29, Mount two, yeah, I saw two. So if we can have more of those, that could be very, very great and make the container because like we have many people that are going into a mountain bike cycling. And of course with those people, like they need uh, um, um, 29 bicycles. And from there with the, with the, of course, 26 bicycle is always general. So, but please guys, uh, make sure you help us get some tires, like all sizes of tires, more especially 26 mountain bikes, 24 inches tires, and, and, and generally with the tubes, please don't forget because it is always a big pair of things that we want. And there are things that are very, flexible to get here and of course we we always work on the bike we check on them before we send them to our recipients and which makes our program very good and even from there our recipients learn from bikes that we send in the communities which of course some of the recipients learn some skills and from there they are also able to ride a bike so with that we always need um tires and tubes including spear power like derailers, chain, um, housing and cables. Of course, with generally we need pedals and saddles on the bikes and most of them like sometimes come without bikes. So if we have a, like a, a pack of that and, and with on the bikes, we make sure we get the bikes pedal checked out before they sent out, that is always be helpful for us but generally and specifically my number one request about things that i want in the container we want we always want more mountain bikes including 29 and 27 fat tire bikes and the road bikes is always is only prioritized for the team cycling team here as i said my boys and me are we are very very um working hard to make, make sure we get the boys into road cycling just like working on a bicycle platform and create empowerment for young boys and young young girls which of course i think is another big way of creating empowerment in the into the cycling sport so with that um we always try to encourage the boys support them and make sure they go to school after training and from there which i think it can be better for them in the future of course we have success story after i train the boys 
three to four years back, trying to bring them into road cycling. Um, three, three of them represented Sierra Leone last year in their first international UCI event. And it all started from us and it happens because of you guys. That could have not happened if we don't have the support of you guys, if we don't work with you guys. So with that, like helping us with good road bikes and with equipment like cycling gears, the shoes and clothes, and even the gloves, socks are very great. So please keep on sending them and with helmet. So with that, like that is something that we always prioritize about. That's great. And uh, I know you, you mentioned road bikes in, in the past, and I know you know that we also use the road bikes here, but I think that was a great pitch and we should be able to include at least a few next time. And also, um, you didn't mention it now, but when we talked before, I was really happy to learn that uh, a tube with a single puncture, so we repair some of them here, but you have a, a robust repair operation there. So tubes that have a single puncture are still very useful to you. Is that correct? Yes. These are very, very useful. Of course, we, I have, uh, of course, with my big team and boys that I train, I think puncture repair is one of my biggest topic that I train them. So if you send tubes with one hole, we are always ready to fix them. We can give them life back, you know. We give them life and make them work again. And with that, like, it makes everything work easy and perfect, of course. And people, <laughs> there is one thing here, and like even the, the tubes you guys sent for us has one old and we patch it. People guarantee that rather than buying the cheap, Chinese tube, which not gonna last you, you know, that is always given problem to bike owners here. So with that, like, don't hesitate to send the tubes with one hole. You can always give them life back. That's great to hear. Well, thank yeah. you for that feedback. And, and like, uh, uh, another thing that I wanna tell you and your team, and I want to also extend a big thank you for helping us loading the solar, the solar lamps, the lantern light that you have. Yes. And like they, they help salvage our present community situation great. Our community has been one year without electricity. And the health center, the health center, which is the only accessible community health center here was out of electricity. So nurses uses their light to treat patients. But with the light that you help us ship, they, they have helped us treat, um, they have helped us electrify the community, the health center great and help students to study under them. So thank you so much. Thank you so much Trevor and your team for helping us send them and with the toothbrush paste of course now i am feeding 125 kids and take them classes which i used to do every year because august is the most hardest month in sierra leone so with that um people cannot able to provide one meal for their kids a day so i provide one meal a day for 125 kids and take them classes every day which is very good. So the toothbrush, the light that you sent is helping me now great to run this program. And with that, we all ride our bikes every day to go to the school, take the kids' classes, and from there, we turn on the light. I can send you pictures of that, and I will soon put that up for you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, and I hope that relationship will continue between you and Helen because she has been so supportive to our work here. That's wonderful to hear. And, and Frank, who's on this call right now, picked up those lights from the Amtrak station and got them onto the shipping container. 
so it's awesome to know that they're they're being well used um they have been in great use they have been in great great use and more especially with the um with the hospital sending them to the hospital which is the greatest thing for me because the hospital has been running without electricity and the nurses using their phone to deliver pregnant women and one of the saddest story that i got one of the nurses was helping a, a pregnant woman to deliver her baby from there her phone light turns off so automatically yes that woman almost um nearly dead you know instead of because of no electricity but with that with this now it has helped solve that situation which is very great. So thank you so much, guys, for that. If you check on my Facebook page, you can see I posted that, and like there was a very big follow up on that, and people appreciate that. And like I even have another person contact me on my Facebook page that said I can support with more solar light because like the story was so sad, like the whole community health center which is accessed by more than 30 people a day had have no electricity. We are happy to send more in the next shipment. Um, thank you. Thank you, uh, Trevor. And I know it's got to be 2 a.m. where you are stylish, and I really appreciate you talking yes. to us now and uh, just how great you've been communicating throughout and, of course, all the awesome work you're doing. Um, you know, I know your your women mechanic training program is going well, and your training. We have the video of the bikes being unloaded and seeing healthcare workers getting bikes and using them to get out into the community and help even more people is really powerful work. So it's awesome to know that the work here is supporting all that you're doing over there. And thanks for staying in touch. And I'm excited that we can keep in communication. And I'm sure. sure we'll talk again before our next container load so that we can make sure to get you uh, things that will be really useful for you and, and further support what you're doing. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. And I'll yeah. always keep in touch and post it on everything. Thank you, guys. Um, Thank you, everyone, for talking to me. Sounds good. Thank you, Stylish. And we'll follow you. So Facebook, uh, Village Bike Project, Sierra Leone. Yes, I'm back. The Village Bicycle Project, and my personal one is Abdul Karim Kamara Stylish. I will send you a link. Okay, and we'll circulate that and share it out with the minutes. So thanks yeah. for taking the time to talk to us, Stylish. And Thank you very uh, much. Yeah. Best Bye -bye. wishes to you and your family. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, well, we were just about to finish up our meeting, um, and that's hard to follow with more business. So uh, just a quick update about our anniversary party. We're turning 21 in October. For the last six, seven years, we've had a party at Lagunitas.